What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be changing that gasket, that oil pan gasket that I was talking about in the previous video. Um, if you haven't seen that one, be sure to go check it out. We spotted an oil leak, which it's probably dripping. Yeah, you can see it starting to drip. Um, I'm about 95% sure that's where it's coming from, so we're going to go ahead and drain the oil, um, pull the pan, clean that gasket, probably throw it in the parts cleaner back there, get the, get the pan all cleaned up and uh, put the new gasket and stuff on it. Um, so stay tuned guys, I'm gonna try and get as much footage as I can. It's kind of tight underneath there, um, so I might just try and set the camera up on like the opposite side I'm working, and then just kind of give you a little time-lapse video of it. But um, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it guys, so stay tuned. Ryan Little. <laughs> Okay guys, so I got the oil drained out, I got the filter off, I got the oil pump off, or not off, I guess it's just loose and out of the way. Um, now I'm going to start taking all the bolts off down the side of the oil pan gasket. I'm not sure how many there are, um, but I just want to kind of give you guys an update on where we're at. Uh, as far as I can see, there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight maybe eight to 10 down each side. So we're gonna go ahead and get those taken off and then I'll bring you guys back once we get this thing off. So stay tuned. What is up guys? We are back. Um, this was the biggest pain ever. Um, I changed the oil pan gasket. My cousin had a 92 or 93 K1500. Um, that one was a lot easier than this one. I I don't know what, what the deal was, but this one, um, I started, got all the bolts out of the oil pan, um, fought and fought with it for probably 45 minutes, uh, probably maybe an hour. Um, still didn't get it out, so finally I had to take basically the shroud or the piece that covers the flywheel, um, unbolt the uh, exhaust collector, pull the exhaust collector down and try and pull that piece down. Got it out of the way and still um, the pan wouldn't drop out because of the transfer case um, being in the way. So we decided just to put everything back together, uh, put the old oil back in it. Um, we started it for probably 15, 20 seconds, made sure there's no leaks. Um, I climbed underneath and it's still dripping from that front uh, oil pan gasket seal there. I, <coughs> excuse me, I still have the new one. Didn't even open the box. Um, probably just going to end up taking it to the shop um, and let those guys deal with it just because it's going to be a lot easier for them. They have a lift they can go up in the air. With the truck they can stand underneath instead of trying to lay and only have a foot and a half of clearance underneath there. Um, didn't get a lot of footage but I'm probably just going to continue this video over um, into whatever day I get it to the shop and they get the trend, uh, transmission temperature or gauge in, um, and get it all wired up, and then get that pan gasket changed. Um, news on the 79, Chad was sending me pictures today. He looks like he got a lot of the fuel lines and stuff put on it. Um, so we're getting closer to being able to start it. Uh, hopefully I can get over there and get a video of it sometime. I probably won't be tomorrow, unfortunately, just because, well, tomorrow will be Wednesday, just because um, I'm probably gonna be busy with hay and stuff. And then also Thursday, uh, which is a bummer, but anyway guys, I just want to kind of give you guys an update on it. It was a pain in the butt. It would be a lot easier if I had a lift here, but I don't. But anyway, like I said, we'll continue the video over. So uh, stay tuned guys, and I'll pick you guys up whenever I get to the shop. What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. So obviously from the beginning of the video, it has been a couple days. Um, it is currently Friday, I believe that stuff was filmed on Tuesday. 
if I remember correctly, it might have been Wednesday. Not 100% sure. I haven't gone back and looked at the footage yet. But update on the 98. The We took it to the shop, obviously. I told you guys we were taking it to the shop. Um, it was there all day. I picked it up or dropped it off at 8 o'clock this morning. Um, they looked at it. Um, they installed the transmission temperature gauge, which I, I was going to do myself, but I like I said, I didn't want to get halfway into it and then something go wrong and I'd be without a truck because I got um, the sensor or whatever you want to call it tapped into the transmission and I got bare wires hanging everywhere. So I just took it to them. It was like 80 bucks for them to um, install it, run all the wires, tap everything in. So I, I just went ahead and paid it um, and just got got it over with. But anyway, guys, um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the oil leak. Um, and they looked at it. Um, I knew they probably weren't going to be able to get to it today because I stopped in um, to Don's Auto here in town, um, local shop, Monday after work. And he said he was pretty much booked up um, all week. He said, drop it off Friday. We'll try and get that uh, gauge put in, which he did. Um, I'll show you guys here in a minute. Um, he said, we'll look at the oil leak. Um, obviously he didn't get to it. No big deal. I'm just going to take it back next week and, uh, have him fix it. So I'm going to kind of show you guys what is up. Um, obviously we have the new gasket there, the oil pan gasket. And here is the gauge I went with. It's just a glow shift. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have been making, um, gauges forever. I believe I had a turbo boost gauge, um, of glow shift in my old 8662 diesel I had. It had a 6.5 turbo on it. Um, it had the glow shift pod up on the dash, and then I believe there's another one down here. But um, <clears throat> they installed it. It's got like the seven, I believe it's seven, two, four. Yeah, seven changing light. Obviously, it's red, purple, white, yellow, green, um, like a baby bluish color, and then maybe like a darker blue. Um, it kind of looks like a blue purple. I don't know how you guys will be able to see it, but the two my fingers are on, they kind of look the same. But um, right now it's sitting down here. They just wired it up to my um, con or the brake controller. What we're going to be doing is I have the pod that will be going on the dash up here. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to kind of try and tuck the wires in around here or um, fish them up through there or something. Not 100% sure what I'm gonna do yet. Um, I might have to look in there, but I just kinda wanna show you guys. I believe here we are. Here is the pod. Um, I believe this whole setup cost me like 55 bucks maybe. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna mount it, probably like up in here somewhere. I was even thinking I could probably go like down in here, but it's not going to be flush. And I was thinking even I could do it over here like that as well. Um, not a hundred percent sure what I want to do with it yet. Um, if I can't run those wires over here and make it look clean and have it sitting up here, um, I'll probably just leave it down there. So I'm going to shut you guys off real quick. I'm going to kind of inspect this over here and see exactly what I got going on. And then I'll bring you guys back and see what we decide. So stay tuned, guys, and I will keep you guys updated. Bringing you guys back. So I got the gauge in here, and obviously it's crooked for now, but just bear with me. So if I mount it up here, that's what it's going to basically look like. Obviously, it's going to be facing the right way. But if I flip it like I have it now, there's two holes already drilled right there, those light blue circles. I can probably reuse those and mount it here. Um, not sure what I want to do yet. Either way, it's not going to be extremely flush because obviously it's going to be poked up on the back down here or I'll have a little bit of a gap up on the top. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to kind of play with it a little bit more. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to reroute those wires up through here. Um, they tapped in so here's the harness for the gauge and then they tapped in over here and brought them up here to the fuse panel and stuff so i'm not sure if i'll be able to run it up through there anywhere um, to get it up in here or what i'm gonna deal with but i might look at that real quick and just see so 
I will bring you guys back. I'm going to kind of mess with it a little bit and see what I can come up with. Otherwise, it's probably just going to go right down there where they have it because obviously they just zip tied it and it's pretty clean. Um, the wires are pretty much hidden up in there. I might try and tuck them up in here a little bit more, um, kind of trim these zip ties back and stuff. But like I said, I'm going to shut you guys off real quick and just mess with it and then see what I can come up with and then I'll bring you guys back. So I decided to come down to the farm real quick because it was just going to be easier to install this thing down here because I had the proper tools and, and everything. So obviously you can tell that we didn't go up here. Um, looking at it, running the wires in through this was just going to be a pain. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get it on camera or not. But basically the plastic piece, the actual dash piece here are my hands touching in the one that's like right in here in that little crack. Well, they butt up against each other right well, maybe you guys can see it right down in here. See where that little daylight's coming through? Right there where I'm touching is that other piece. And there's not any room in between there. And I wanted it to look clean. I'm going to get some more zip ties and um, kind of zip tie it up in here a little bit more. Um, I really don't care if it's... I might get some of that wire loom. I have some um, running along there just to make it look clean. I'll probably do that um, real quick. All I did was took my drill, drilled two little holes. I was gonna use these holes, but it was way too high. Um, I didn't realize that the holes for the actual pod, um, they were back in the back a little bit farther. They're back here, instead of being in the middle, like the 92's um, boost gauge pod. But no big deal, I just drilled two little holes. Um, it's not gonna go anywhere, it's in there pretty snug. Um, I'm gonna go get that wire loom, cut these zip ties off, put that wire loom and stuff on there just to kind of make it look, look a little bit, look a little bit cleaner, excuse me, stuttering over my words, and then just kind of zip tie it up and out of the way. So uh, stay tuned guys, I'll be right back and uh, I'll pick you guys up soon. We are back, and obviously you can't see any wires hanging, so we made some progress. Um, I tried to have the camera set up here and try and do it, but it was kind of hard reaching around the camera and trying to cut everything. So that is what we have. Um, I started wire loom here, ran it up to where the ground wire splits and taps on to this here, as you can see, and we ran it back up all the way to the gauge. Um, I like the clean look. Um, I know some people are like, oh, you're not going to see it because it's underneath the dash, but it just looks so much better like this. I'm going to come back and trim um, this zip tie up right here, and then we should be, I think, good to go. So, yeah, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like here in a second. Like I said, I'm going to get all this stuff trimmed up, get it all finalized, and uh, we should be, like I said, we should be good to go. So, stay tuned. Give me... 10 seconds off camera to trim all this up and then I'll bring you guys back show you exactly what the gauge looks like got everything 
finalized guys um like i said i just kind of went underneath there clean that up finish that wire loom over here um those are those other wires that they spliced in or whatever so i'm going to show you exactly what it looks like now um climb in the truck i kind of like it down here it's not up in the way over here and like i said i really didn't want to try and run those wires up through here but i'm just going to roll my key forward the gauge comes on you guys will be able to see that you can see it at all really so there it is i'm sorry for the humming noise but you click this little indicator down here like i said seven collars that's the green i believe the purple the aqua blue the dark blue the kind of like oh that's the seven changer one which is kind of cool goes between all seven um dark blue again so as you can see it's pretty cool um i'm not sure which one i'm gonna have to see what it looks like at night um, I'll probably just leave it on this one, the seven color changer for now, until I can see which one looks best at the night, because I don't want it super bright and blinding me in the face. But anyway, guys, that is the um, transmission temperature gauge um, from Glowshift. Super easy to install. Like I said, I was going to do it myself, um, but I didn't want to. At first, I thought I was going to be able to, because I think I have 18 gauge automotive wire in there, um, but... Like I said, I didn't want to get halfway into it and then not have anything. So it's pretty simple. Um, some of the wires to the fuse panel are over here, like I said. Um, so anyway, that is it. Chad is rocking away on the 79. So I'm hoping I can get over there Monday and get some footage of it. Um, we are just a few short steps away from being able to basically do that motion and turn the key and see if it'll actually fire so i want to thank you guys for sticking around if you're a first time viewer smash that subscribe button hit that bell notification share the channel and remember guys learning as i do doing what i love i am the gm man and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace